Hello and welcome to the Superhero Hub and you know it's been a while but we are powerless. I'm, I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And today we're going to be reviewing... <laughs> powerless. <laughs> yeah, the latest episode of Powerless. Obviously it's been on a break for a couple of weeks but it's back and it's powerful. Um, the episode is called I'm a Friend and I mean... What 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 did you like? I mean, they're obviously mixed reviews with you. Uh, what did you think of it? Yeah, you know, it wasn't as bad as it's. It wasn't as bad as it's been. It's worse, but it still hasn't broken into good territory. I thought it was great. Um, you like your mind. So I mean, this episode was kind of, well, the Crimson Fox leaves Charm City. So obviously everyone thinks oh they're gonna be more susceptible to attack. So Emily decides, oh no, I'm gonna go to self defence class and she gets the assistant to come with her. But, yeah, that was it. I knew it was something like that. But the kind of the the assistant uh blows her off a little bit and is like, Yo, I'm not hot well, she don't really she says she'll go. So she's kind of standing around, she goes there, and then when she comes out, she kind of bumps into Teddy, and Teddy's like, yo, I knew you weren't, I knew she weren't going to turn up, and it turns out she's Uber driving on the side to pay for a school trip, but Emily being Emily, she has to kind of, you know, stick her nose in, so she ends up going to the school, and being like, yo, here's a, here's a check, because apparently Jack is short on money, even though she's like assistant to like, Wine security, light management, but apparently she's short on money. I don't know how. So yeah, she turns up to the school with like a check, and then like all the little kids are there, and she's like, oh yeah, because you're going to Six Flags Metropolis, and all the kids get gassed. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turns out there is no school trip, and then like the woman's like, yo, this is a public school. We go to like cemeteries and stuff. Uh, not that. So like all the kids get angry at her, and like one of them gives her the finger. I thought that was jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's alright. So yeah, it turns out that really, um, J- Jack is saving up to go to night school because she doesn't be w- want to be like an assistant to Van for the rest of her life. Um, so yeah, and the subplot was that apparently someone's been dumping in Van Wayne's private toilet so it's kind of throwing an investigation even though the investigation only resolves around Wendy your favourite character uh, Teddy and Ron Uh, of course what well who else would it be there are only three people who work there apparently well well, he, he, he kind of points at the old woman you know little old woman in the crowd that's right she was jokes um I thought it was a there was a lot of like a laughable bits in it, but one one thing that bothered me is that he calls them into the office, and that they're, they're they're talking about it, and I think so, someone says something about logs, and then they kind of laugh, and then like they go on to like explain, and it was like oh uh, it was funny because we're talking about uh, going to the toilet and you said logs, that ruined it for me. I think they should have just <laughs> laughed at it and carried on. Yeah, and I think that's I think you're tapping into a bit perhaps my biggest problem with the show in general is A, I don't find a lot of their jokes funny and B, when they are funny they have to explain them yeah, that ki- that that moment did kill it for me I was thinking that would have been much better if they just laughed because I laughed when they laughed you know what I mean, after they said it I was chuckling along and then I was like, damn, they explained it that kind of that kind of killed it for me um, there are there are there were a few like doofy ones like the, the t-shirt thing like I'm a beat you or whatever and it was just like yeah or I'm a I'm a bitch I can't remember because like Van comes in and is like I'm a bitch and it was like that's very unprofessional and kind of strolls off I thought it was kind of better in this episode um the kind hey, of Van yeah I thought but yeah a bit mixed me on this episode he was his funny moments I think were the funniest of the show and then there were some lows I just think there was a couple of gags that didn't hit I can't remember what they were now, but it was a couple of... I remember seeing, you know, that joke with the old lady. You know, there was one that was funny, and then there was a follow-up that wasn't. I think they need to learn to hold back with Van a little. Mm-hmm. Um, 
is is a lot more as noticing like when he goes into the office and the bees flying around and it's kind of melting very uh very michael scott from the office but something's not quite hitting it there you know what i mean i i, I, I can see where they're kind of trying to go with it but for some reason it's not quite i think it's the way he talks i don't know i think it's something about the way way he kind of it's the kind of tone of his voice when he made a delivery yeah yeah he does he does seem I, I can't speak to um the american office well i know in, in the british one eventually especially in the second series they got to a point where david brent just wanted to be everyone's friend but couldn't figure out a way to do it and so came off like an asshole whereas with van it doesn't seem like he wants to be their friend mm-hmm. it's like he really is an asshole and there it's kind of harder to like the guy yeah um I know. I think there's something there, but there's 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 a lot of kind of rough edges. I uh, thought it was kind of like when he brings in when he brings in the the janitor or whatever, and his name's Peter, and he keeps making the kind of uh, the Mexican jokes and stuff like that. Um, I know. I think I've seen, uh, you kind of see that stuff all before. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's it's a generic stock character of a guy who's in charge. He's too much of an ass or to care about anyone else I guess that's the joke but eventually with a character like that there comes a point where you have to do something to make them like to make the audience like them to endear them otherwise you're going to dislike that character as much as everyone else does mm. in the show yeah um, I mean it's not that he, he is unlikable I think they just kind of really go for like the kind of really obvious jokes but mm-hmm. he kind of comes off a little robotic in his delivery um <laughs> I mean, it tur- turns out at the end, like that they tried to like the magazine got in there because they're talking about how he's kind of they found like uh, short hairs and like a pair of scissors, <laughs> short curly hairs and a pair of scissors, and it's like no, 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 not that, not that. The magazine. It turns out the magazine was there because he swatted the bee. I mean that that was kind of okay writing, I guess, and then obviously it turns out at the end, like literally everyone's been using the toilet, and like the janitor's just been deleting the footage. Um, so I mean, I get, I guess in that sense, those two kind of really like tiny little twists and stuff like that. Kind of it was it was well, well kind of written, but really it, it it didn't really hit like full potential. It was right. The right the writing was tight. You know, it's it's a tight script. It's just, it's not great. There's still, there's still, the show's not had a great episode. There's not an episode where, you know, if we were introducing a friend to the show and I was like, okay, watch this. Now, if I was introducing a friend to Doctor Who, I can think of five episodes off the top of my head. I'd be like, okay, watch that. And that'll make you love the show. I can't do it with this one so far. And granted, we're only, what, seven or eight episodes in, but. For a comedy in a first season, you've got to hit it at some point, and it still hasn't. Mm. Um, I think that, that they could really, really be on to something with the DC references. I made, I mean, they're, they're, they were back to making a few. I think really that could be the unique selling point, but really, I mean, there's a lot of kind of potential there. Because, I mean, if you watched. Um, the, the kind of ba- Lego Batman movie and you think of all the inside jokes there and stuff like that about the DC stuff with the doofy characters and stuff like that I mean if you're a- able to kind of pull some of that and put it onto the show I mean because then it'd be less like oh you have to like really know the comics to like get the jokes and stuff like that but if you kind of put maybe some of the Lego Batman humour into there the more obvious stuff but still kind of funny and move it onto that then I think it would work better, but I think really the unique selling point could be the DC references, but really it's kind of hit and miss. But is it, there is a way that it can be done, but it just kind of hasn't done it yet. Um, Maybe, and I, I do wonder if this is one of those ideas that's just better in theory. You know, we'll have to wait and see, but the idea that, oh, you follow normal people in the superhero world, yeah, it sounds quite cool in theory, but when you get down to it, and you just kind of sat there thinking, okay, where's Batman? Where's Superman? They asked what I want to see. And the uh, the thing is, it, the world feel, it feels like it's kind of empty. That you know they brought it up, yeah, it's in the DC universe, but it could be anything. Yeah. So far, it doesn't feel like it. That at least to me, I mean, 
what can you do though I mean they're not going to introduce Batman are they I mean I get they talk about it but he's never going to be on the show they, they have kind of with the Jacko Lantern and the, and the Crimson Fox I mean there is actual physical like cameos and stuff like that but I really it just depends on how far they can actually yeah. kind of no one knows who they are yeah, no. I mean, there's only. Uh, I'm wondering if that's like literally their like license. They can only use characters like that. Because I think it, it, if they kind of establish that they could use like big characters and stuff like that. But then again, would that just be a kind of uh, gimmick? I do, and I just I don't think I don't think DC or Warner Brothers would want that to happen. I don't think they're gonna want um, you know some dude playing Batman in an episode or Ben Affleck as Batman. They're not going to want. Look, look at look at the all the palaver with. Well, Sufia. really, well, really, you could never, you you'd never need, you know, you say Ben Affleck playing Batman in it. Uh, you you it just have a person in the Batman suit. No, but I get I get you don't need Ben Affleck, of course, but I mean, what I get is they don't want someone else playing Batman. I don't think it's why there's not a big. If they wanted someone else, for, I don't know. There's obviously more than Batman, but on Batman, if they wanted. Batman on TV, there'd be a Batman TV, never mind Gotham, there'd be a Batman TV show, they just don't want it. I think the same goes for Superman as well, yeah, they put him in an episode of Supergirl, but I just don't see him doing it for a half hour comedy on NBC. Yeah, especially when it hasn't kind of been fleshed out, I mean, to be to be honest, the way I'm thinking of it, I mean, there's still no news on whether it's going to be renewed for a second season yeah. so at the moment it is kind of really uh, up in the air so I mean to be honest I mean I figure if it were to get a second season it'd be like that. I mean the best thing they could do is get the original kind of showrunner back on and be like look we tried it our way we screwed it up let's try it your way and see if it's any better yeah and it, you know and it, it is a definite revamp and it, that might work Yep, uh, Parks and Recreation was different in the first season, was much better after it. It's whether it can survive and gain the popularity we'll see. The thing is, with comic book fans especially, is they are quite fickle. And once they've decided something's crap, generally speaking, that's it. Yeah. You know, no matter how good you might make it afterwards, eh. Yeah. At the moment, I, I, I'm way into it. I, I, I'm excited to watch it every week. So, I mean, yeah, I'm hoping it does kind of hit the right No, Let's talk numbers in future, and I hope it does get a second season and they sort out, because there's a lot of potential there. They're just really... Sin- they, they're skating around it, but they haven't kind of hit the nail on the head right now. All right, yeah. No, uh, I'll, give it, I'll give it a six. I thought, it, you know, it was okay. Yeah. It was fine, but it's just... You need to get better. But it was it was okay. I didn't hate watching it I'll give it a 7 because I found myself laughing generally more than I normally do at it there are a lot of more kind of funny bits but I mean I do, I do laugh at it there are some kind of good bits in there but I guess I could throw the term few and far between I guess because there, there is a fair bit that misses but I think I think they're getting there I guess I'm just hoping there's going to be that one solid episode that's just going to be like right this is this is where it's at, and it's going to continue like this, on a kind of positive trend. So right, because if if what a yes, I want it for a point where a reference we can point out to people and say, look, there's a great episode. This is what the show could be. But also from from them as well, the pilot didn't work. It wasn't the, generally the idea of a pilot is you set the time for what the show needs to be, but it wasn't very good. So if they can have a great episode then they can point at that and say, okay, for every writer we have on this show, this is the kind of tone you need to hear. This is what we want you to do. So hopefully it's coming, but there we go. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that is our review with the latest episode of Powerless. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And this has been the Superhero Hub. See you in the next episode.